right, mate. What a guy. So I met Paul, uh, when did I meet you? Two and a half years ago? Yeah, about that. So Paul uh, runs a soccer club in California and with a business partner of his and they hired me on, I think, what, so I worked with you for about a year? Yeah, uh, that, yeah. That's kind of how we got to know each other. Um, well, we gave you, you gave you a trial and you did okay, so it's all right. We kept you on in it. Best record at the club, surely. <laughs> uh, so, uh, oh, first things first, what are we making today? Um, it's like a, a veggie egg scramble with, uh, with potatoes. I'm using sweet potatoes, but you can use whatever you want. Oh, nice, decent. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the same ingredients as Paul. I'm just going to turn mine into an omelette. Um, yeah. Make it a little bit, you know, a little bit different. And I've got some roast potatoes in the oven. Do you put any seasoning on your roast potatoes? Yeah, just I, I used to just use salt and pepper, but I really like paprika, so I always put that on it as well. Oh, decent. I've got this. I like paprika too. Um, this is a really good one. If you can see that. Oh yeah. It's What's that? That's, chip, that's garlic. Chip it's white rib rack. It's a sugar-free season. It's really, really good. Uh, so potatoes in the oven, just because they take a while. I mean, how do you do yours? Mine usually take about forty-five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll either pre-boil them and put them in the oven or just stick them straight in the oven. And I think, like, mine are, I don't know, mine will be done in 20 minutes. It normally yeah. takes about half an hour or so. I don't make potatoes that often, to be honest, mate. You're not. Fair play. Right, so for those who don't know, Paul, do you want to just kind of tell us what you do for, for work? I know you, do, you don't just college, you do quite a few things, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I've lived here in, in LA now for eight years. Before I moved here, I've always been involved in, uh, in sport and soccer, really. I ran a football business. I'll interchange between football and soccer because I'm used to calling it football. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. But I, know, I know for the Americans it needs to be soccer. Um, yeah, I ran a business for years back home that was, that was soccer. I worked for local government for a few years. Realised that was corrupt, just like it is here, and got out of it. Um, but in the time that I've been here, yeah, I volunteered for a while with AYSO and then met Ricky, who obviously you know, and yeah, we decided to start a club together. So we've had that for four years. We've got eight teams and like 150 kids. Um, yeah, and then a year ago or eight, nine months ago, started coaching the local high school as well, which is one of the biggest high schools in LA. It's about three and a half thousand kids, I think. So yeah, uh, you can fairly... You up, mate? I said you landed on your feet there, didn't you? <laughs> Well, I did, and now like, everything seems like it's great in LA. The club was going well, high school was going well, and now it looks like LA will literally be the last place to reopen again. So, yeah, I've heard, like, here in Albuquerque at the moment, they're starting to open up like swimming pools, and I was at the park yesterday, and some of the youth baseball teams and clubs are already training. They're, they're back? Yeah, they're back. Um, they, had, they had like different things where they kind of, could see they're spaced out and they would do drills that were normal but the fact that yeah. they were allowed to do it was pretty pretty cool um and are you having to wear masks everywhere you go or not yeah i mean you don't have to it's not kind of like california but um most of the people do unless you go to target i went to target the other day i swear i was the only one wearing Nobody. a mask yeah, it's like, and their groups are like six and seven it's a bit crazy but well they, they only they in santa monica yesterday because this is a Obviously, this is a little bit of a police state here. They, they made it mandatory yesterday wearing masks to go out and included, ex included exercise in it. I, I ain't wearing a mask any time to do yeah. exercise. I mean, I won't be able to breathe, to be honest. Uh, are you using onion in yours, Paul? I am, yeah. Onion, um, bell peppers, just known yeah. as peppers in England, but bell peppers yeah. here. Yeah, onion and, uh, and mushrooms because I love mushrooms. Yeah, I'm the same. So I'm gonna uh, I'm just heating up the oil now. I'm gonna stick the uh, chopped onion in. Um, what 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 oil what oil what oil are you using? Because I like using coconut oil, but a lot of people find it too sweet. I love coconut oil. Uh, I just ran out and I couldn't be asked to go to the shop, so I'm just gonna use normal olive oil today. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm like a massive fan of coconut oil, to be honest. And it, I think it gives it a nice little flavour as well. It always gives it that no, nice it, sweetness. It, it does, and no one here can complain about using coconut oil and it making your breakfast too sweet because sugar goes in everything, isn't it? So they're used to it. Exactly. So what? Um, 
I mean, we used to travel quite a lot for tournaments, and obviously, me and the coaches would sit down. Um, you know, we, we what was it? Uh, what's that buffet type place we used to go to? Uh, oh God, uh, Sue Plantation. Sue Plantation. So when I used to, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm probably eleven, nearly nearly eleven months in now to just eating plant based. But yep. when I had my shocking eating habits. Um, yeah, I always remember you. There's like us coaches sitting there. We go up and get our plates, and yeah. obviously mine, mine, and I'm gonna say Ricky's as well. It was covered, wasn't it? In I'd say just shit, just fast food, um, ton of meat, and it was constant. And I always remember you were always very kind of particular about what you ate, um, and you'd always stick. To, you always looked like you always stick to the health health foods. Have you always been like that? Yeah, I started really when I was a teenager, like 17, 18. I guess I was fortunate in that uh, my mum was the head chef at the local school, which again was a big school. And so I grew up with her cooking food every day. We never had like takeaway. We never had really fast food or crap. And so, yeah, like that was from a young age. And then when I got into my, into my late, late teens, um, Sorry, you've you chucked all your veg and stuff in yet? Yeah, so no, I'm, I'm putting my onions in first. All right. Um, I just like to get them a little bit brown. What about you? No, 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 I do. Yeah, much better when they're brown. Yeah. Much sorry, better. Um, sorry, where, where was I? Um, talking about yeah, I lose... Of course I was. I do lose my train of thought quite a bit. I feel genuinely like I've got early onset Alzheimer's, so you might have to prompt me occasionally. Um, all right. Yeah, so that... And from my kind of then late teenage years, uh, I started to look into it myself and I just started reading books. And I was always interested in nutrition and, and whatever to do with sport. Um, and yeah, like I, I did that over the course of four or five years and I probably read 30 or 40 books. And although I've never needed to, um, let me turn this off. Although I've never needed to kind of diet as such, because I'm fairly fortunate, like genetically, I, I don't get fat. I, um, I've tried it. I feel like I've tried everything, like paleo, Atkins, low carb. Like I tried all of it just because I wanted to see how I felt. And yeah, that, that, that went into my, into my 20s. And my brothers, you know, my brothers used to laugh at me and some of my mates used to laugh at me because... I'd eat the same stuff or I'd eat different things to what they did. And it was like, what, Paul, what's up with you? you like, you got OCD or whatever. But yeah, yeah that, that's just, that's how I've kind of always been. And that's carried on into adulthood. When, when we met, you were strictly no meat whatsoever, right? Yeah. You, uh, and you that just was, mostly fish and veggies? Yeah, that, that was it. Like, I, I mean, I'd eat everything except meat, basically. And um, now... You said that you, you kind of do it once a week or for a treat. What, what, what's the story behind that? But both of those. Yeah, I mean, once a week, sometimes I don't eat it at all. But generally once a week, and it's, I suppose I class it as a treat, whether it be uh, like a burger or a steak or whatever. But yeah, the six or seven years when I moved here, I, I was a pescatarian. I didn't eat meat at all. Um, and then, I don't know, I, again, I, I've spent the last couple of years looking into whether meat is a benefit or not and there's so much conflicting evidence and I just arrived at a point where I personally thought getting certain nutrients from meat for me might be helpful and so I've been doing that for the last four or five months if you ask me like is there a big difference I and mean, don't do I notice I can yeah, run I 10 like yards there, yeah. like you know I'm not jumping any further or running any further or I'm not sleeping any longer. Like, it, I just think it's a really individual kind of subjective thing, to be honest. Yeah, a lot of the groups that Kelly and I run, we get a lot of the same questions about that. And I mean, it all comes down to individual individualization, doesn't it? What your yeah. body can do. Like, for example, the reason I went, my peppers are in, by the way. Yeah, okay. Um, not saying you have to, you know, copy me, but that's just... No, nah, it's I'm... okay. Hey, you're the pro, so I'll just follow you, innit? I pretend I'm a pro. Um, so, yeah, like, with my circumstance, I was almost forced, because I abused me. I'd down a steak three times a week, chicken burgers, you know, all that shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I yeah. It, and then I obviously had that near death experience, and that made me just think, right, I'm going to try not having meat. And for me personally, I've never felt any better. Um, right. And a lot of the, um, yeah, I just, and when people say, like, why, why, why are you just plant based? And that is it. That's the truth. That is, yeah. that's all I can really say to him is like my health. And I wouldn't yeah. say, if I could, yeah, I mean, I'd love to think I could have meat, but I'm at that point now where I feel so good that I don't need it in my diet. Um, yeah, and I, and I think that's, that's, that's exactly it. Like, it is really an individual thing. And because of how you feel, obviously, you're going to stick with what you're doing now, and it makes sense. Like, quite a few years ago, some of the parents and a lot of my friends would say, oh, what do you eat, Paul? And what do you eat on a, this day and this day? And can you take me through what you eat? Because you're always staying in good shape and you, you seem healthy. And I said to him, like, you, you have to try yourself and go through, find foods that you like, try different stuff and find something that's healthy for you. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same stuff you eat every day, but find some kind of routine that works for you. Because what works for your body and your genetics ain't going to work for the next guy. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's exactly it. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't mention a beer that I'm having today. It's called uh, Urberon. It's from Minnesota. It's, I've never actually heard of it. It's a place called Let's Conquer. see. Hold it, up. Hold it up again. What is it? It's an it's a American wheat ale. It's actually really nice. It's more of a summer drink. Um, right. But like I said, I mean, I used to, we used to, back to how we used to kind of sit, especially on traveling tournaments, it would yeah. be me, kind of me, wouldn't it, with a beer, cold beer in my hand. And I never really noticed that you had a beer or anything. Have you always kind of been like that as well? I mean, yes and no. I've been off and on like that. When I, when I played football back home in England, like, it was part of the culture, as you know. You finish your game, the lads go out, and you get yeah. smashed up, and you have as many beers as you can drink before you, like, you collapse. And that, that was the same for me. I went through the stage like everyone else did of Red Bull and vodka till I realised my heart was going to stop and then jacked him off that. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, no, Jaeger bombs. Yeah, I went through that as well. And I even had a couple of weekends. I think I went on dates and had absinthe. Imagine going on a date and having absinthe. Like, it was just brain dead. So, yeah, yeah um, I, I just, I, I'd done that enough in my late 20s, got to my early 30s, and just got to a point where, I think it was in my early 30s, I started drinking wine and realized that, not all red wine tastes like vinegar if you spend more than $5 on a bottle, which, as you know with me, was a bit of an issue. But now I'm okay. I'll spend a bit more. So it's fine. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of just thought, no, I, I don't need to be drinking often. And I personally feel better for it. I enjoy a few beers at the weekend with my girlfriend or, or we'll have a couple of glasses of wine um, or occasionally she'll make some tequila mix stuff. And I enjoy it. I like the feeling of relaxing and having a drink, but I don't like getting to the point where it's going to affect me the next day when I get up and I can't work out or I feel like I've got a headache or whatever. I just don't like that. Yeah, absolutely. A big part of the book, actually, I don't think you actually know the point I was at for, because we never really spoke about anything personal, did we, because we're guys. No, no. That's not what we really do, but in the don't book, I mentioned a lot that I did, I wouldn't say I was an alcoholic, but... An alcoholic, you can you can ha you can just obviously crave a beer every single day, and that to me is an alcoholic. And yep. so I do consider myself. I used to be that. I used to come home. I used to have a, a cold beer or two, and it wasn't for fun. It was because I was pissed off that day, or something made me angry or upset. So I'd go yeah, home yeah. and look forward to that beer because it's like an escape. And yep. It's kind of actually when the other day I made a post about that with the mental health, where you don't. You think, nah, that's not me. Like, you ca I can't be. I'm a normal guy. But when you really sit down and think about it, my health completely deteriorated. And food, shit food, and alcohol was a massive impact on that. So yep. I keep an hour, probably one or two beers a week, and it used to be eight to ten, easy. And then the weekends would come. So, uh, do you feel? Things, but, I'm glad, do, 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 I'm glad do, I know now, and not when it's too late. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you feel way better for that? Oh, uh, yeah. I even get to the point now after one beer, let's say like it's, you know, Friday, I'll have a beer, um, a beer today, get that nice little just relaxed feeling. I've got no work on today. 
But that's yep. it. Usually I would think, I want more, I want more. You know, you just have another beer oh, and you just feel better. But then at some point you start diving. I used to hate, like you said, waking up, feeling like shit. And diet and alcohol are the major, major part of that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's quite, it just it, it, it ruins your day. It ruins your day the next day. And, and I know a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people struggle. A lot of people struggle and they, I'll say to people, can you not just have a beer or two beers and be happy that that's what you have and you feel a bit relaxed and chilled and you're good with that? And they're like, no, 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 I'll, I want to have some more. Yeah, absolutely. He says swing, he says swing on a cold as he's, beer. As he's drinking, starting at one o'clock early. All right. Um, what was I going to say? So in terms of like, obviously your schedule and that, how do you yeah. keep up with the energy levels? Because obviously it's mainly youth athletes that you coach and you go from yeah. what, uh, eight year olds all the way through Sorry. like 17, 18? Yeah, yeah, I just had a bit of a spillage on the floor, so I'm just picking that up. That's all right. Before my, do- before my dog George eats it, because onion's probably not good for him. Um, yeah, sorry mate, my Alzheimer's kicked in again. Just, just remind me where we were. <laughs> Uh, I'm asking how you juggle like, the energy of eating food and that. How do you how do you maintain that energy level from the moment you wake up? So because your schedule is pretty, especially during high school, it's you know wake up, you've got to do club stuff uh, in the background, then you've got to do yeah. high school coaching, then you've got to do club coaching. How how do you maintain that energy level? Yeah, good good question. Sometimes well, sometimes not so well. I, I have an issue in that I don't always eat enough. And I'll, I'll get busy with work or whatever and, and not eat and realize that I've got training in an hour. And then I'm like, well, what can I have? And in that time, I'm really funny about my digestion when I work out. I don't want to have anything to eat within a minimum of two hours of working out. And like maybe a smoothie an hour before, but otherwise, yeah, I need to make sure. When I was back in England, just quickly, I, when I used to play football, I'd get up intentionally at eight o'clock in the morning so that I could have pasta with like coriander soup. And that was my go-to before a game. I'd make sure it was at least four hours before the game because I always wanted to feel light when I played. Oh, wow. So, yeah, sometimes I don't do it well enough, but if I can, I'll get up and I'll have a, a smoothie and then maybe a scramble, and that'll keep me going for at least half the day. Um, do yeah, you, and then I, I, you go all the way through for dinner? or Say that again. Do you go all the way through from that smoothie and scramble to dinner, or do you have like a snack? Do you have a proper lunch? Yeah, no, I I, I wouldn't have a proper lunch. That would often take me through. Um, there's the odd little like chocolate bar thing from Trader Joe's that I'll get as a snack, but generally I don't really eat snacks except occasionally when my sweet tooth goes and I have free ice creams out of the freezer. But that's about it. I remember the buffets. Paul would always be the first one up to the ice cream machine, wouldn't you? No, I, I have I have got a bit of a problem with uh, with sugar and a sweet tooth. And if I could, I mean, look, you you gotta you go eat some crap, and that's my vice, I guess. But if I didn't, I'd, I'm sure I'd be in better shape than I am. But yeah, you need something. On a, so on a quick one, what are you, what seasonings are you using for your scramble? Uh, I use I'm using this because I fancy that kind of bacon flavour. Can you see that on the camera? Oh yeah, it's decent. That that's it's what really is that like? Funny. A, of, Let it be flavour. Um, bacon lover season. It's a really, really good one. Bacon. So it's a vegan thing, but it, it smells yeah, and tastes like bacon. bacon. It just literally tastes the bacon. So what they've got in it is onion, garlic, salt, paprika, pepper, cumin, coriander, and a natural hickory smoke flavour, which they get from oh, some oil. So, sounds nice, that. Uh, definitely recommend that. I sauteed everything now. I've got my onions, my peppers, and my mushrooms. I'm going to just yep. warm up the tomatoes a little bit in the pan for about a minute. And yep. then I'm going to, because I'm making an omelette, I'm actually, I've never used this. And you actually told me to go and buy that, didn't you? Yeah, and I watched a couple of reviews on it online. And also it, it's, it looks as though it's very, very similar to eggs and apparently tastes very similar to eggs. So We'll, we'll find out, won't we? We'll see. So how we'll are you see. Doing yours? Have you sautéed everything? What's the next step for you? Yeah, I'm do- like the mushrooms, peppers are done. Um, for me, it's just a case of, of putting in the eggs and scrambling it all together. And then I'll, I'll put the cheese in close to the end. And then I normally just chuck a little bit of rocket in near the end. Well, it's arugula here, isn't it? A bit of that in near the end just to give it a bit of green. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to add spinach to mine. 
Uh, what cheese do you use? Do you usually use like a mature cheddar? Do you use plant-based cheese? Just go full-on dairy? What do you usually use? Yeah, I mean, I, I normally just use normal dairy cheese. It'll be a like a sharp cheddar or something. I like a strong cheese. So, um, yeah, and one I have used... Biggest, one of the biggest things... I, I mean, I love cheese, and that's one of my biggest misses. And I've tried stuff like this, um, Follow yep. the Heart. Out of all of yep. them, this, for me, it's the best in terms of like a mozzarella or a cheddar. Um, you're never, ever going to replicate proper cheese that I've found. But there is right. one... There's one that um, I picked up from Whole Foods, which I'm going to sprinkle on top. It's the closest yep. thing to goat cheese and like a feta cheese. And that's my favorite, a goat's cheese. It's called Tree Line. Yeah. You get a small, small little tub. It's like yeah, $10. What, what, I was going to um, say, it's got to be at least $10. This, this is the treat cheese. But I'm going to sprinkle that on just for today. Oh, decent. But yeah, I do miss cheese, I must say. Um, I mean, look, I, 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 when, especially in the summer when you're out from early to early, do you meal prep? Do you like cook at home and take it with you in containers or do you literally just go through, like you said? No, I will. I'll, I'll sometimes take it with me in a container. Again, it's, it's just about putting the time aside to do that. And I always feel better if I do prep and take the stuff in a container. And again, it'll, it'll be a scramble or something normally with, with fish and some vegetables or rice. Um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. And I'll, I might have a snack, like I say, a, a, what I'd call a healthy bar from Trader Joe's. I can't remember what it's called, but there's only, there's only one that I'll buy out of there and it's just three or four ingredients. One of them is cocoa. And so, yeah, that, that kind of gets me through. And then very often I'll end up having a big meal when I'm back at night after coaching's done. I mean, what do you usually have for dinner? Do you just change it up or is it usually just fish and veggies? Yeah, like a lot of the same, a lot of the same stuff, which I suppose is a bit monotonous and maybe looked at as boring. But like, I like certain foods. I know they're healthy. I know it works for my body, and so I like I eat the same stuff all the time. Having said that, like when I'm at my girlfriend's, Marima, like she'll make different things, and it's fine. I'll eat it. But yeah, I generally I just kind of cook the same stuff. It'll be fish and vegetables. Um, like maybe again. Uh, for dinner, I'll, I'll sometimes have a scramble, but I'll throw some fish or maybe some meat in it as well. I mean, I'm the same. Like, we, again, we, when we look through our groups, we get asked a lot about the same things. Like, how is it not boring? And I always say, for me, it's not because I know what I like. And also, I just change everything up with a different sauce. Like, I'll have buffalo yeah. sauce, habanero sauce, sweet chili. But it completely changes the dish. So I just cook like this. I'm going to cook a big omelet and I'll have the rest for dinner. And that's not a problem yeah. to me. Yeah, I don't have, I don't have kids, so I haven't got that need for variety, so I can be disciplined. Right. But I know for a lot of people, it's not it's not that easy. But I would say the sauces are a big one for me. If you can just like this, you could even without the egg, you can just add some sauce, and you've got a little scramble yourself without the egg. It's easy. Yeah, yeah. Do you have you ever had any uh, like health problems, Paul, from like food or your diet in the past? No, I mean aside from. When I was younger and right through to now, I'm, a, a pro, I'm probably a tiny bit mental, I think my friends always used to say. So apart from being a bit mental then, or having OCD and having to line stuff up and clean things as I'm going along, no, like I, I've had no health issues, um, no digestive issues, nothing. I bet, Because I, uh, like I said, I, you knew me when I was going through those pains. Remember, I used to turn up to practice and I'd be like, you'd know straight away, wouldn't you? You'd see it on my face, that was an agony. Yeah, and it's because I was too stubborn. I didn't go to the doctors, and then the obviously just kicked me in the arse in the end and said, "You have to go, mate." Like my body just yeah. told me to go. Um, yeah. But yeah, I always kind of envious of people who don't have that, or they can basically tolerate most foods. Um, but have you noticed when you're at your fittest and your biggest in terms of size and energy levels? Could yeah. you remember? Is it now? Was it? You know, is it age that's taken over, or do you feel the best you've ever felt right now? No, I mean, I you, you can't fight aging. I, I know people say you, you you can, you can stay young. You can't fight it from a physical perspective. Like physically, I, I'm never going to be able to run as fast or catch someone like when I was a 20 year old. Which is why, very fortunately for you, because you're a few years younger than me, you were able to run away from me in one of the games. We played on you know, a Tuesday night, and it was uh, it was in 
Santa Monica and me and Paul on the opposite team. And I got the ball in the halfway line. It was the last, what, 10 seconds of the game? We had to score. Yeah, quick. yeah. And yeah. it's one of those where the ball was in between us and I just sprinted as fast as I could. He was coming with me and I felt it. He knew, didn't you? You knew you're either going to take me out clean or just have to let me go. Luckily, because that's the first time, actually, the first week we met. And luckily, yeah. after the game, you went, mate, I was going to take you out there. Because if, that, like, if that's a normal soccer game, but yeah, I um, uh, I'm you sure a lot of game, yeah, a lot a lot of people that are competitors will be able to see it. If you're watching the Michael Jordan documentary recently, you see it in the way he is. But if I if I thought I couldn't catch someone or they were just going to get away from me a bit, my like nastiness would kick in and I would just whip their legs straight from under them. And that that definitely would have happened had it not been like a a relaxed game and you had only just met you. Maybe if it, if it had been one of my brothers or old mates running away from me, I would have just whipped them straight down. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so my, my omelet's done. I don't know if you can see that. Um, put the nice goat cheese kind of on it. And then I'm I mean, look at that. that. Say again? Professional, that, mate. Looks yeah, so good. Gordon Ramsay, in it. Gordon Ramsay. Uh, I'm going to stick this under the broil for a couple of minutes. Uh, make yep. sure the top's cooked. And whilst I'm doing that, well, you said you're going to make a, usually have a smoothie with it, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make the smoothie while we're doing it. Yeah, again, simple, just a few ingredients. Takes a minute to do, make. What's your you go-to smoothie? Do you have the same one like I do every single morning? Say that again. I said I have the same smoothie every single morning. Do you, are you the same, or do you mix it up? No, I'll, I'll generally have the same one. I'll, I'll generally have the same one. It'll be, uh, it'll be a, a cup of coconut milk, um, two big spoonfuls of of some kind of yogurt normally a, a greek plain or a greek vanilla yogurt um and then a big handful of a banana a normal ripe banana and then a big handful of frozen peaches and a big handful of frozen pineapple so peach and pineapple or, or peach and strawberries and that's it do you add any seeds into it or do you just stay away from that type of thing no i don't because i uh, i i generally have I'm sure you've heard of it, Athletic Greens in the morning. Uh-huh. So I, I have that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I won't put any seeds or anything in. I'm, to be honest, I'm not keen on seeds and stuff in, in smoothies. Really not. So I'm going to make, I'm just going to make a coconut yogurt with a fruit bowl. Yeah. Uh, I just ran out of chia seeds. I usually add them, but I could be asked to go to the shop. So not even going to bother. What, um, what would you say... When you look at your athletes for both club and high school, what's yep. the most frustrating thing as a coach looking at the way some of the kids eat? Because again, like in the book, I mentioned that, especially like, well, throughout I ate like shit, but when I got even to America, it was very protein based. It was, you know, bigger, the more protein, the better, you're stronger, you're bigger. And that was kind of the theme. So when you, uh, and I used to eat like crap even when I got to college here in America. What, yeah. what are your thoughts on the way kids eat um, that you've seen for, like I said, with high school and club? Well, I'm, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's not different in in most of the developed countries, except maybe Japan. I love Japan because they're so healthy. But I'm sure it's the same back in England. There's definitely a problem here with uh, the education in terms of nutrition and food is disgraceful. But most of the kids, bless them, don't have a clue on what they should or shouldn't be eating. I was the same too. I was completely the same in England. I mean, look, if you're not, if you're not going out and, and taking the initiative and reading yourself, which, let's face it, most young kids, who wants to go and read a book about nutrition? No, yeah. So if you're not going out and taking initiative and doing that, no one's really teaching you. And I mean, like the, the food pyramid, and you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this, but the bullshit of it here, Again, shocking what's handed down by the government and stuff. Like, we have to eat a certain number of this and that, and whether it's grains or you can't have saturated fat. Like, it's just, it's just backwards. And so the, the kids have kind of got no chance from what they're taught from a young age. Yeah. I mean, I could, like and I then, said, until I met and until I kind of, you know, started the book and that and talking to chefs and nutritionists and obviously yeah. Kaylee's a gut and health expert, I, was, yeah. I this day I, I start thinking like, why was I taught as a kid that this was this or 
Why wasn't I said, right, you need to do this. This is how many vegetables you need, or this is how much protein or carbs you need. And it, I actually write it in the book about my mum, bless her art, because she was kind of the main cook. We'd come home from school, and she would just stick chicken nuggets and chips or fries in the, in the oven. We'd sometimes have a burger. Yeah. And we yeah. FaceTime, I think January, whilst we were starting to write the book. And I asked her, that, is my memory correct there, mum? Is that how... And she, at the start, tried to play it off, like, ah, I, I gave you a lot of veggies. I was like, mum, I don't remember that. And she was like, well, your kids were so active. You played soccer all the time in the street. It was almost just get it in you and get out the house and go play in the road. That's kind of the mentality where I grew up. Um, yep. I think it's a little bit more educated now from that point of view, from a parent's point of view. But I still think it's not, especially in the schools maybe, like when I was a high school coach, it wasn't enforced. It was, there wasn't like a leader to say, this is what we need to do. Like the canteen food, especially in college here, like tater tots, greasy chicken, fried chicken, burgers. And I'm thinking, I'm, an athlete, I'm meant to be an athlete here, and they're giving me this stuff. And because I wasn't disciplined at 21, give me yep. those tater tots, mate. Give me, give me four burgers. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, it tastes good. The stuff's nice. Oh, it's amazing. It, it's it, amazing. it tastes great, but what do you expect? I mean, you're basically eating salt and sugar, so it's going to taste good. But, like the, yeah, the, the, kids, the kids don't have too much of an idea, and so they end up, a lot of them, um, will just have the wrong thing before or between games if it's at a tournament. Like they'll, we, uh, me and Ricky always talk about it. We laugh that we had a tournament one time with our boys' 05 team, and uh, we won the semi-final. And I remember saying, make sure you're sensible, lads. You've only got two hours. Like, go and get a smoothie, and that's enough. Get a smoothie, and you'll be good. You'll get a bit of energy from that, and then the rest of it will come with adrenaline. Don't eat any crap. Literally three quarters of the team genuinely went and got a massive burger. A massive <laughs> burger. Like, before the game, they came back. No lie. Half of them couldn't run. I think one or two of them were almost physically sick, and we got leathered 5 nil. And me and Ricky, like, our heads <laughs> went. Just said, we <laughs> You're never, ever doing that again between games. And so, but again, it's not their fault. They don't know. If they're like, what am I going to do, mum? Where should we go? Oh, let's go and get a burger. All right, then. Like, they, they don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a problem, isn't it? And like you said, like I was the same as a kid. I didn't care. I just wanted food. I didn't care what it was. Just get some food in me. Uh, I wasn't a picky eater, so I just remember not eating what I should have been eating, especially as a soccer player. So... Um, mine's all done here, space. I'm about to cut my omelette. What, what stage you are? Yeah, mine's done, mate. I mean, you might be able to see it a little bit there. Look, I don't know if you can see it. There's, there's my scramble look and, oh, yeah. uh, and the potatoes on the side. So I might throw a bit of... Let's have a look if I've got right, any. Before you, before you cut into it, make sure you take a little picture so I can put it on the video. Obviously, mine's going to probably look better because, you know, I like to present it well. It, it, it'll look far better, won't it? It'll look far better. But it's it okay. Will. It will. Hang on, it's let me... Right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how, how can I take a picture so this is my, I've got my phone up oh, there yeah, on the just try. Just do right now obviously mate just all afterwards right. in it when you've got, you got the oh, phone oh, oh alright mate that's fine yeah I'll do it after um, alright yeah well cheers Smooth that space that was uh, I appreciate you coming on mate I mean like I said you're going to have a lot of experience with younger athletes in particular um and for someone who's extremely healthy like yourself, like you obviously do sessions seven days a week, so I don't think it's, you know, it's not going to be a problem whether or not you eat meat, fish, or you, I think it seems like you've got your, your eating habits down to a T. I and mean, I kind of yeah. wish I was like that early on, to be honest. But but, but you're, you feel like you're at that now? Yeah, I feel like I'm at that now. I mean, that's why when people, I think, when I went plant-based, people got confused at the start. It was like, why? You know, is it a fad? And no, it's like, it was actually for health reasons. And now yeah. I do look at the other side of it with the animals and think, yeah, fair play. I, I just, I know I'll never touch something like that again, and especially when I look at Bailey and that. You know what I mean? So that's for me personally. I'm not no, no, I get I, it. I'll never ever say to someone ever like, should be plant-based because I just don't think that's realistic. In like you said, for your diet eating maybe meat once a week or the fish that you do it works for you you have no health issues you know you're, you're a, a fit lad so um i think i think yeah people get a little bit confused sometimes about being plant-based vegan and stuff like that as it's kind of like a a tribe like a hippie tribe or whatever but yeah, and, 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 
it's, it's know, not it's not is it it's not and, and like the reality of it here certainly in the time i've lived in america i don't know what it's like in other states but like people could benefit massively here just by um by trying plant-based just by trying not to have meat and seeing how they feel and how different it makes them feel because let's face it like the health here isn't great i'm not pretending it's great in england and europe either like obesity and all the rest of it it isn't great and so if you're in a situation where you're not feeling great and you don't wake up feeling like you've got loads of energy and you can get through the day, nutrition's the first thing you should look at. Change your diet and have a look and see how that helps you. But everyone, yeah. instead of want changing their diet and doing it through food and taking a break from meat or whatever, or dairy or whatever it is, I'll go to the doctor and get some pills instead. It drives me nuts. Yeah, I agree with you on that, mate. Bye, lad. Well, I appreciate it. Enjoy your, enjoy your day. I'll talk to you soon. Oh, I will, mate. Certainly, mate. Good to see you, Nick. Cheers.